Hey everybody, Budgie here and today I want to talk to you about what I consider to be one of the most useful, in fact indispensable pieces of kit that I carry with me everywhere and to talk about why I never see anybody else carrying one and that is the Eurosherm Swing Light Flex Trekking Umbrella. When you're out in the group and you open it up um, and people comment on it and believe me people will comment on it when you pop up an umbrella I, I respond by asking them why they don't use one and the two general answers appear to be mainly it's not something I would ever try or I did use one and on questioning further they always used the golf umbrella that's how I started too. I first used a golf umbrella and they're just not suited. They're too big, too cumbersome, too prone to being moved around by the wind and more importantly they're too heavy. So a purpose-built umbrella however makes perfect sense. I've been using this one for years. I bought it uh, from Germany, from the manufacturer. They weren't readily available in this country at that time. And I noticed now that they are, you can get them pretty much anywhere you get your specialist walking equipment. I also had a look online at the Eurosherm catalogue and they've expanded their model range. They now make a, a vast array of pretty much what I'd consider tat. Uh, just to increase their market share no doubt but this model is still available the swing light flex i noticed that weights for it were, were varying depending on where i look they either weren't stated or they were, were varying you know up to 50 60 grams so i weighed mine without the um, sheath cover that comes with it that's something i've never used the base model weighs 237 grams or at least my one from three or four years ago does usually in my larger packs this is placed in one of the water bottle holders and just secured with the compression straps if you're out without a pack walking the dog or just going for a stroll the supplied sheath which is quite heavy can be replaced with a simple piece of shot cord made twice the length of the umbrella body itself and then just secured at the handle and the tip with the bowling knot. One of the ways where equipment can become more valuable to us is when it's multifunctional and that's where I think people may be doing this item of equipment a disservice. The clue's probably in the name, umbrella, umbra. Umbra is uh, Latin for shadow. It's the central and darkest part of a shadow where the light from the light source, in this case, the sun, is obscured by the object. Again, in this case, the light swing. This makes an absolutely fantastic parasol. The umbrella is actually designed for that purpose. It has a Teflon silver coating to the 100% polyester canopy. The canopy is a meter in diameter at the base. And it's just absolutely superb. We've got two great walks across the downs of southern England, the North Downs Way and the South Downs Way, with fairly considerable areas completely um, exposed. And in the summer, this is just worth its weight in gold. I mentioned multifunctional. It also keeps the rain off. Again, it just excels. We hear people moaning on forums about the the, um, the drawbacks with the various state-of-the-art waterproof clothing and uh, you're either sweating from the inside and it wets or, or it eventually wets out in torrential rain. The easiest way to stop an item of clothing wetting out is to not get wet on it and this helps, it just helps so much. During the mid part of the day when the sun's at its highest this casts a shadow down to your ankles. Centre shaft and the ribs are all coated fiberglass. There's no metal in it. Uh, the website mentions that as being hopefully effective against lightning strikes. If it was covered in water, I don't really think that that's something I'd like to put to the test. But no metal, no rust. The only signs of wear that this is showing 
is I've got some wear in a few areas of the silver Teflon coating and that's no doubt because I've never used the sheath that it was designed um, to be put inside when you're not using it. This has always just gone in my pack exactly as that secures with, with Velcro. The fiberglass ribs are very strong and very flexible. Uh, in strong gusts of winds the canopy deflects and bends rather than turning out inside out or crashing back down. It's surprising the wind speed that this is still a useful item of equipment. So can it replace a rain jacket? That depends, that depends where you're going and, and when you're going and how long you're going for. Uh, on a full three season in, in spring and, and autumn on a multi-day trip, I don't think I'd like to be caught, caught out, particularly at altitude, without some sort of, of hard shell. But in summer, this coupled up with a, a Houdini jacket uh, windbreak is is fantastic solution. It can be strung hands-free through using the wrist strap through the hip belt of your backpack and then again a simple shock cord and um, line lock to secure to the shoulder strap uh, works a treat. Uh, Eurosherm do sell a hands-free umbrella round kit and it's awfully expensive and no better than anything you can fashion at home for a couple of quid. There's also a far lighter range, the Trek Ultralight I noticed um, today when I had a look on their website. It came in at under 200 grams, which made me interested. I quickly googled and saw the first two reviews for it. I saw it had fallen apart completely on the first use. So I won't be going there, I'm going to be sticking with, with my trusty one. I would just urge you to try it i suppose um i don't know they the the uh, silver coating is a premium on the price but for 50 quid i don't know you know if that's something you're not going to use then maybe it is a waste but i think you will use it i think you should try one and i think you'll make it part of your kit i mentioned in the beginning this goes with me everywhere and i really do mean that uh, it goes in my bag that i use to commute backwards and forwards to work it goes in my day bag if I'm out hiking for the day. It goes in my main sack if I'm out for an overnight or a weekend or, or a multi-day. I just don't leave home without it because it's that good. If you're using a conventional type pack with a uh, pack cover as opposed to perhaps a DCF and a liner, this can protect your pack from water ingress. Over your shoulder, the back of it covers the gap between the pack cover, the back of the pack, and your back. In inclement weather, perhaps at altitude or if temperatures are dropping and you do have a hard shell on, as I mentioned earlier, this just, this just delays by hours uh, the wet out. Showery weather, it's just a godsend. If it's rained on and off six times in the morning and you've watched people, perhaps you're climbing, they're getting too hot and they are in and out and in and out of waterproofs. And I'm just wandering along with this. It's, it's far more airy, there's none of the heat build up that you get in a waterproof jacket. It, it's just such a win. I beseech you to try one. I think one of the reasons we don't see any, uh, other manufacturers coming into the market and really pushing these types of kit is that they want to sell you jackets. Uh, state of the art modern jackets are very expensive in comparison to something simple like this. Okay, so are there limitations? Yes, of course there are. This has a particular set of um, environmental factors that it works fabulously in. And I wouldn't like to push it beyond that. If you need both your hands because you're scrambling on an exposed ridge in high winds and perhaps um, an electrical storm, the last thing I'd want to be holding is this. As mentioned earlier though, it's incredibly resilient to wind. You will be surprised at just how far you can push it. If you're on safe, flat terrain into a headwind with stinging hail or rain, this 
is absolutely superb. I've done that multiple times in Scotland. The only difficulty was you couldn't see where you were going particularly well because the canopy was obscuring the view forwards. But it was a lot better than a face full of hail at 35 miles an hour. So their website now seems just full of gimmicky things. There's ones with compass built into the handle or a torch built into the handle. The centre pole length is adjustable. Uh, there are collapsible versions. It's all just something else mechanical to go wrong and it's all just adding weight. This model is still on there. I'm really hoping that my enthusiasm for this piece of kit has come across and that you take it upon yourself to add it to your Christmas list. Um, maybe try one. As ever, thank you so much for watching. If you found any value in this video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't found any value, then please watch it again until I've convinced you to try one of these. Also, please consider subscribing to keep up to date with content as it's released of all things keto and all things hiking. And I'll see you on the next one.